by one of the presentations that I've done in the past is called uh, History is the Movements of People. And we will substitute the word migrations for movements. We know, I think it's been firmly established, uh, that humanity does begin in Africa. Not only archaic humanity, the Australopithecines and the early hominids, but uh, Homo sapiens sapiens too, or modern men, wise men, uh, we have been called. Um, humanity begins in Africa, but humanity is not stagnant. People don't remain still. They didn't in antiquity and they don't today. People move, and they move for different reasons. You have uh, many factors. You have, for example, overpopulation. You have um, following herds of animals. You might have drought. You might have natural catastrophes. You have any of a number of reasons to force people to migrate and these migrations sometimes are sporadic, sometimes they are more systematic and sustained. Um, so you have a wide variety of factors uh, that cause people to move and the way that they move. So we know based on studies of DNA, uh, particularly mitochondrial DNA, that all humanity has an African ancestor and that all the populations in the world can ultimately trace their ancestry to Africa. And so it's our job, I suppose, to uh, explain when those migrations occurred and what happened as the migrations developed and um, took on momentum. So <clears throat> the first, I would say that there are three broad, broad, broad waves of African people, migratory waves that we could look at. One is that humanity begins in Africa and those original Africans spread all over the world. And we can find their uh, remains remnant populations, we might say, um, in Australia, or I've had an opportunity to visit on a couple of occasions, and we'll be going back again next year, and certainly Asia. I think that Asia, in fact, is the first continent after Africa to be populated. It's close to Africa. As a matter of fact, in antiquity, it was connected by land to Africa. Now, there are two major, I would say, uh, pathways that uh, we took going into Asia. One would be across the Suez Isthmus, okay, which is in northern Africa, and the other would be across, um, I guess, the area connecting southern Arabia. I think this area is called Bab el Mandeb, I believe it's called, that's connected to Somalia. Now, in antiquity, there's no doubt that this, uh, what is now water, was an isthmus, a land bridge. And by these two routes, Africans crossed out of Africa into Asia. The other route that would have taken us into Europe would be across um, the area we now know as Gibraltar. But let's just deal with Asia now. So these Africans began to move out of Africa, I would say, maybe 150,000 years ago. And I would imagine as time goes along, we'll find even more ancient remains. The more we study, the more ancients, the movements occur, and they are effectively documented. So you have these early migrations, and the man that we see on the screen right now, I think, represents that. As a matter of fact, this Andaman Islander, Andaman is spelled A-N-D-A-M-A-N. This is an island chain, the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, off the coast of India, off the east coast of India, in the, um, I believe it's in the um, Bengal Sea? Yeah. Yes. Um, it's midway, I say, between India and Myanmar, the country formerly known as Burma. And I think that what happened is that you have these initial Africoid or African populations that wandered all over Asia and that over a period of time they were absorbed by larger populations, they were exterminated, they were pushed into fringe areas so that we find them in islands, we find them on, uh, in dense tropical rainforests like uh, northern uh, Malaysia and southern Thailand. We find them in the islands of the Philippines. And so those are the folk that I want to emphasize right now. If you look at this man, I think that you could easily fit him in the category of people that in Central Africa, also in dense tropical rainforests, would be called twa. Or we use the pejorative term sometimes pygmy. These people scattered all over the earth. I think that this man represents our earliest known humanity. Short black people, heavily melanated, tightly curled hair. As a matter of fact, the hair that you see him wearing, interestingly enough, looks a lot like a lot of the hairstyles that you see among young African men and women right here in New York City today. Now they've only survived in small numbers and they are an endangered species even today. Uh, the Andaman Islands, I believe, at least some of them, 
were utilized as prison colonies by the British uh, because of their isolation. And these sisters and brothers exist there in very, very, very small numbers. Let me show a couple more slides to further illustrate this point. I hope I'm making sense. Mm -hmm. Now, these uh, black men here, and the next few slides I'll show you, are actually from the Philippines. And they represent a similar physical type, not quite the same, but very similar in terms of the short stature. I generally refer to these black folk as diminutive Africoids. Of course, uh, I'm not even sure. You know, you have these groups in the Andaman Islands, and they have different names. And the same thing in the Philippines. Uh, generally, they are known by the pejorative term negrito. This is a word uh, given to us by the Spanish, which just means little Negro. Uh, the Spanish came to the Philippines, I think, led by Magellan in 1542. And our early, early Spanish chroniclers documented that they were actually um, ruling the Philippines. The word Philippines, uh, is, uh, the name comes from Philip II, King of Spain. And you know that the Spanish and the Portuguese were on a global expansionist uh, type of movement in the 15th and 16th centuries and they traveled um, to Far East Asia, including the Philippines. And at that time, you have two dominant ethnic groups. You have this group, who they called the uh, Negritos, or Little Negroes. And then you have another group called the Tagalog, who looked more traditionally Asiatic. Now, um, the modern word for these uh, black folk in the Philippines is Eta, A-E-T-A, -E at least is one of the words. And this is also a pejorative term. It's not a pleasant word. It means, literally means filthy. And then they call themselves Octa, A-G-T-A, a word which just means the people. As a matter of fact, when we find these very ancient, you might even call them primitive uh, pe populations, and I don't have a problem with the word primitive because it's based on the root word prime, as in first, indigenous, aboriginal. Um, they're called Octa. Uh, 